Hi, everyone. Um, welcome to our lesson on 2D arrays. Well, we're not going to start covering 2D arrays from the beginning because we already did that previously, but we're just going to go through a few exercises, exam style exercises, that involve 2D arrays. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so what this what we've got right here is we've got this 2D array, grades. Remember this is signified by the outer square bracket and then three arrays inside this bigger, this outer array, okay? Um, we're gonna do some fairly simple tasks right here. Um, we're gonna find out a grade at a specific position. We're gonna print out all grades greater than 70 and then we're gonna calculate the average grade and print it out. So let's get started with the first one. Um, uh, what is grades two, one? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna think about indexes. Remember the first um, value right here is going to represent um, each of these inner arrays, so each of these rows. So this is gonna be the row at index two. So this is gonna be the third array, zero, one, two grades two, and then it's gonna be index one in grades two. So zero, one, so the answer is gonna be 65. In this 2D array, grades, just grades two would be this one. This would be grades one and this would be zero. So grades two, one is going to be the element at, at index one in the array at index two in grades. So 65 is the answer. Print out all the grades greater than 70. So here we're gonna do, uh, we're gonna complete a pretty typical task with 2D arrays. And we're going to search a 2D array and print out all the values that meet a certain criteria. That is all the values that are greater than 70. So let's go ahead, let's copy our array here into REPL IT. And then let's do that. All right, so we've got our 2D array right here. and so basically for when we're searching through 2D arrays, we're always going to have two for loops, all right? One for loop to look through, to go this way, to look through the rows, and one for loop to look through everything in each row. So for row in range len grades. So that means row is just gonna change from zero to one to two. That's our first one. And then for column, in range len grades row. So what this means is that for each, so for example, we're gonna start at row zero, row at index zero, and then go through everything in that row. Then row is gonna to change to one. So we're going to go, to go to the row at index one and then go through everything in that row using this loop. Um, and then we're gonna go using this for loop, we're going to go to index two and using this for loop, we're gonna go through everything index two. So this handles moving from here to here downwards. And then this loop handles moving through each array, each row, um, each time. So basically to print out, to get um, each value in our 2D array, we can do something like this. Uh, print uh, grades row column. So let's go ahead and run that, make sure that works. And there's gonna be a mistake right here. Forgot the colon. Okay, so this way we're printing out every single thing um, in this 2D array. Um, so again, keep in mind, like even if you don't understand exactly how this works, you can kind of see like where things are. Like this is the length of the array. This is the length of grades with the row variable, um, with the row counter. And this is how we're getting access to each and every individual element in here. So just kind of pay attention how things are arranged because you can kind of use this as a formula to complete these tasks. Um, okay, so that's gonna give us every single individual value. So our task is to print out all grades greater than 70. So we can just take this, use an if statement. We can check if any of these are greater than 70 and then print them out. print grades row column. 
Okay. Mm, got another problem. Ah, parentheses. Cool. Okay. If you can see, we've got only the grades greater than 70. So that's number two. And then calculate the average grade and print it out. Um, if you've seen the other two videos, this should be a pretty simple task by now. Um, we're going to create a variable called total, like we always do. Um, we're going to... Well, what we're going to do is we're going to say total equals total um, plus grades or plus grades row column. So we're just going to add up all the values together. Um, and then, so if you notice, we've got three different arrays, right? And in each of these arrays, we have the same number of, same number of elements. Um, so, I mean, we've got three arrays of five elements. So really like our like number of grades could just be um, len of grades, which would give us three times len of grades one, for example, which would just give us five. But we want to do it in a more general way. So we're going to say um, number of grades. And get the general number of grades here. So every time we access one of these values, we're going to add one to number of grades. And then we can print the average, print total number of grades. Well, let's just create a variable first. Average goes total slash number of grades. Print out average. And there we go. Mm, we've got a problem, number of grades. Ah, so zero. Okay, cool. And that's our average, 65.4. Looks good. Um, again, if you're not familiar with like how this works, uh, go back to the totaling and counting video because there's a pretty good explanation of how this works and why we use this. Um, this is an example of counting. This is an example of totaling. They essentially work the exact same way, um, but it's worth reviewing. All right, so that was our exercise. We got a specific grade in the 2D array. We printed out all grades greater than 70 using two for loops. And we calculated the average grade by using the same construction, but just by using, um, by just by using um, the totaling and counting concepts. So let's move on to our next exercise. Um, right here we've got a longer exercise that's more that is much more um, exam style. So let's take a look at that. This is also kind of um, more akin to what you might see in a real world context, like if you were actually using 2D arrays in a real world computer program, as rare as that is in the IGCSE. So let's kind of talk, let's analyze this problem and see how this works. All right. Um, we've got <clears throat> we've got two arrays right here. We've got a we've got a 1D array called Instagram handles. And then we've got a 2D array with number of followers um, three days. So basically what this means is, well let's let's take a look at, look, let's take a look at the uh, prompt. Um, the array Instagram handles contains the ins usernames for three Instagram accounts. So you've got Pretty Girl 23, Ugly Boy 92, and Princess 75. The 2D array number of followers three days contains the number of followers for each of these accounts in the first three days after starting their account. So this would be day one, day two, day three. The index of each subarray, by subarray we mean each of these arrays inside the bigger array, so each of these, matches the index of the respective Instagram username in Instagram handles. So that means that this array at number of followers three days, zero, is matches this Instagram account, this one matches this Instagram account, and this one matches this Instagram account. So for example, the number 
of followers for Pretty Girl 23, this one right here, which is at Instagram handle zero, uh, would be number of followers three days zero. So index zero, index zero. Index one, index one. Index two, index two. So how many users did UglyBoy23 have on the second day after he started his account? So right here in Instagram handles, UglyBoy92. We should make that UglyBoy92, actually. It's a little strange. Um, so UglyBoy92 is at index one right here. So that means that all of his, like his, the number of followers that he has, or he's had over the first three days, would be at index one for number of followers three days. Um, so let's put this into Python and let's kind of play around with this just to get a greater understanding of how 2D arrays work, especially in this context. Okay, let's, let's not format this in such a weird way. Okay, cool. So it makes a bit more sense than it, it would otherwise. Um, fix the quotes. Okay, um, well, so what we wanna do is we wanna find out how many users UglyBoy92 had on the second day after he started his account. So really quick, if we wanted to print out just UglyBoy92, we do print out Instagram handles one, okay? So let's go ahead and run that. We get UglyBoy92. And then if we wanna print out his followers for the first three days, Remember the indices between this 2D array and this 1D array match up. So how that would work is we could just print out Instagram uh, handles. Sorry, you could print out number followers, three days. And then we could print, and then we would just write one. See these indices are the same. That's how that works. So let's do that. And then we're just getting this inner array right here, this array. 21, 210, 221. Now, what we want to do is we want to print out how many followers he had. Um, followers is a better word for that. How many followers, followers he had on the second day. So this being the second day. This is the first day. This is the second day. This is the third day. So the second day is going to be at index one. So we're just going to print out number of followers. Well, one and then one, which is gonna be this one right here or this one right here. And let's run that. Okay, so it's gonna be 210. So ultimately, this is the code we need to print out. Number of followers UglyBoy92 had on the second day. So our next one, um, write up code to print out each username and Instagram handles next to the array that represents the number of followers they had in the first three days. So our output looks something like this. We just want to print out the handle next to their given array. So actually, we don't even really need to use a 2D. We don't really need to use four, two for loops to do this. Um, so let's say let's think about the first step, right? So the first step is we want to print out each Instagram handle. So range len Instagram handles. Okay. So if we just wanted to do that, then we could just do print Instagram handles. And then counter. And then we'd be done. Instagram handles is not defined. Ah, spelling error. Okay, so we've got these. Um, but remember, like, the counters for these, so 0, 1, 2 matches up their respective arrays in this 2D array. So if we want to print out the array for each one, kind of like how we did in our previous example, we would just do that, and then we could do number of followers. Let's 
three days and then use the same counter. Because like pretty girl 23 is Instagram handles zero and all of her data on followers is number followers three days zero. Okay, and we got it, we're good to go. That's what that looks like. Um, let's take a look at our next task now. Our next task is write code to print out the difference in number of followers between the first day and the third day for each Instagram account. So we wanna find the difference in the number of followers between the first, between the first day and the third day. Mm, we should probably make this third day and first day because we're really looking for a positive value. It's probably kind of weird that I'm editing this exercise while I'm showing it to you, but I did write it myself and exercises can always be improved. So for example, right here for pretty girl 23, we want 100 minus 21. For ugly boy 92, we want 221 minus 21. For princess 75, we want 10,312 10, minus zero. So let's go back to our code and see how we can do that. We're just getting the difference between the third, third day and the first day for each um, of our Instagram handles. So this part's gonna stay the same, but basically what we wanna do to calculate the difference is for each one, Instagram counter, two minus Instagram counter, Uh, zero, and then difference. So using this loop, we're going through each one of these three arrays using just this one for loop. But for each of those, we're going to get, each time we go through these, we're going to get the um, value at index two and the value at index zero and subtract them. And we're gonna do that for each of these. Um, well, let's just put this down here just to make it clear. And then we're just gonna print it out. So let's go ahead and run that. Instagram is not defined. Ah, Instagram handles. Mm -hmm. mm, unsupported operand type. Hmm. Ah, okay. Sorry, I made a mistake. Um, I was just using this array up here when I should have been using this array down here. It should be number followers three days, right? Because after all, that is the 2D array. Here we go. Okay. So just to reiterate, we're going to go through each, um, uh, each array inside number followers three days. Um, and for each one of those, we're going to get the last value and the first value and then subtract them from each other. All right, cool. And we got exactly what we want to get. So this is a good example because these types of long problems with a lot of explanation and just a lot of information are similar to what you're going to have to deal with on an actual IGCSE exam and an I in IGCSE style problems. Um, of course, you're going to have to write your answers in something called pseudocode, but this is still really good practice for when you do get to that point. Anyways, I hope this video was useful. Have a nice day.